But what I want to know is, what is the bedrock foundation of your community that helps to grow every single day, right? But what are those core principles of PyBytes that made an impact on others? Those core principles, like... How many do you want? Um, <laughs> Two or three? It will be so great if you could give more than three or five. <laughs> okay, okay. Welcome back to the Exploding Podcast. My name is Teja and more than anything... I just want to say a huge thank you for every single one of you for an incredible affection with over 20,000 plus website clicks from 34 plus countries across the world just in two months. Now I know you're coming back every time to learn, to execute, to exploit and to clone the thought process and to be able to make a huge difference in your work, life or business. And the best part of our brains is that we learn more when we connect more, right? We make more intuition when we get a chance to question them, right? Then how about questioning an incredible person behind an amazing learning community? And how about learning with them to build and grow a community in technology, right? So today's guest is the coach, software developer, and the co-founder at PyBytes. As you already know, he is none other than Bob Belderboss. Before we move ahead, a huge shout out to TalkPython Training for sponsoring this episode. Exploiting is all about loading up your career in the tech space. Learning a bit of Python will allow you to take your expertise and 10x it with automation, APIs, and even AI. The best place on internet to learn Python is our TalkPython Training. Visit talkpython.fm forward slash exploiting to find your next level. Now, on to the ad-free show. Bob is a software developer, Python career coach, web and a data geek specialized in creating tools to automate and optimize business process with a decade of experience. Back in 2010, he joined Oracle where he built web tools reducing the time to resolution of support engineers. Later in 2012, Bob shifted his career from Perl to Python. He's an instructor at Talk Python Training and a contributor of Real Python as well. Now, Bob is the co-founder of PyBytes, which is committed on creating well-rounded Python Python developers by courses, exercises, challenges, or by mentoring one-on-one. -on, -one. on top of all of that, he's the one who deeply cares about others and helping them to thrive. And I can't wait anymore to start exploring with Bob Belderboss. Thank you so much for being here, Bob. I really, really mean it. Wow. That's an amazing introduction. Uh, thanks for that. I'm really, uh, really stoked to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. I'm so glad that you are here. And, and you know, when I've been through the whole journey of uh, PyBytes and all about that, I know you're into from finance, right? Later, your career got a huge shift into computers, right? Uh, when I usually ask people, what is the scariest thing that you have done till now? Most often, they say shifting their careers from existing fields to another, right? And that's what you did. Like, that's a huge jump off, right? Yeah. So how was those times? How was those times that you were jumping off from a financial analyst or a software developer or to a completely self-employed? How was that? Scary. <laughs> it's, uh, you grow <laughs> into it. So I, I, I was a financial analyst um, and that got a bit boring. So I started to automate my work, um, writing scripts, uh, providing more value, and I kind of naturally evolved into more of a coder. Well, first a scripter and then later on a professional developer. And I think that it was a passion for automating processes, which I did have back in my finance days. And yeah, you one thing leads to the other. It's not really um, that you can plan that stuff out. Um, it's just you grow into it. Um, but then, yeah, going... Um, full on entrepreneurship business since the last two months that that was a tough decision but uh again PyBytes what was at that point that uh, they really needed me full time on that yeah yeah that's that's amazing like it's been it's been almost years now the way that the impact that is being created in the python community is so huge right but how were those initial days was it the same mission that started with or it got pivoted into something else and it got moved into another development levels you mean PyBytes right Exactly. Yeah, we uh, we just started. So PyBytes started as just a Python blog. Like I was, mm -hmm. I'm doing this with uh, Julian Sequeira, my best friend. Yeah. And we were talking about business and self-development for over 10 years, right? We, we met in Sun Microsystem back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we were just passionate about helping people um, growing, not only with their coding skills, but also as human beings. And we have been talking, we had been talking for this like 10 years and I guess we just needed a way to to express that and 
yeah, we, we found Python as the vehicle because we love coding, we love programming development. Um, yeah, we centered it around Python, but it just started as a blog uh, <laughs> in the initial days. And then we went on doing the 100 days of code, uh, which is kind of a tough challenge. Um, and well, actually, the first thing we did was blog code challenges. So we host those weekly uh, challenges to our community. And we, um, as we went, we started to see a niche of uh, pragmatism, of uh, solving real-world problems as the things others were not really doing. And we found that to really have benefit for ourselves. Like it worked really well for us. And then we brought that back to the community and we did blog code challenges and then 100 days of code and kind of finding our, our niche. Yeah, but when you mentioned that you got a shift from with your friend Julian. So is that is that where you both are working with Python or you both are working with different things and got engaged with Python? Yeah, good question because we are, we're kind of, I was more like the scripting guy at that time. So using Bash and, and Perl and other technologies, PHP. Hmm. And I grew tired of that and I found Python as the holy grail. <laughs> <laughs> and Julian was more like a hardware data center guy. So repairing machines, so more on the hardware side. And uh, but he wanted to learn to code, so I came in with a bit more experience, uh, but not that much Python per se. And he came on pretty brand new, so that was kind of our dynamic from the start. That I would be a bit more. I mean, I didn't know that much Python, but I had been coding for five or six, seven years, so I did know software. Um, and he was brand new, so that kind of had that interesting um, dynamic at the start, like these two different angles to the language. Cool. Uh, and also one of the most impressive initiatives and the one which takes along the learn is learning is that I found PyBytes uses this 100 days of challenge, like 100 days of code and all of that, right? Yeah. And I know that you're an amazing instructor, maybe at PyBytes or talk Python training everywhere that you that you spoke about 100 days of web and 100 days of coding, right? Yeah. But uh, also like a, there is a huge cult for 100 days of X as well, right? But, but why do you think uh, doing it for 100 days is such a huge thing? I think it's huge because there's a high dropout rate. So a lot of people started, they're all, it's a bit like New Year's resolutions. They're all pumped about it, going to do this. And then <laughs> typically around the 15 day mark, it gets very tough to keep that consistency up, right? Because even though it's like an hour a day, um, projects are just getting more complex. You start to hit walls and then it's just a lot of willpower to stick to it. Uh, I think people also start to be perfectionistic about it. Like I have to do that uh, ABC every day. Although you could literally just, I mean, the official rules of the challenge are to just code for a day. You can literally time it. And when 60 minutes are up, just stop it. And you don't have to deliver a project, uh, a product every day or every week, as long as you just stick to the one hour a day. Um, I think it's consistency. We're more busy than ever. Um, I do have to say with COVID, you know, we're more at home. So that's, it might be a bit easier to pull it off with the time you save from commutes and stuff. Um, but I think the, um, doing something for 100 days straight is just is pretty tough with, with anything, let alone coding. Mm. coding. Yeah, yeah uh, and I mean, it, taking it into a little bit forward, the thing, what happens is when we, when we actually try taking some challenges and making it forward, uh, we usually heard that, um, you know, when you are so passionate about doing things and you're so deep into that, you don't generally need any sort of uh, encouragement or uh, motivation, right? Mm -hmm. but, but genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, like it's, it's so hard to keep the, keep the strike up and keep the spirit up and moving it forward. But uh, you have a huge number of people uh, learning from you and they are learning from PyBytes. So how do you keep your community members so engaging and being active and taking the spirit up every single day? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have um, a couple of, of channels where we constantly push content to. So there's the blog we try to keep up. We have our newsletter um, that's typically three emails a week with all kinds of uh, valuable stuff, Python related, but also career and mindset. We uh, do mm. a lot of lately. And we have our Slack, um, I think you've been into as well, um, 2,200 developers there. And um, the cool thing about our Slack is that people just take over and they start to help each other out. <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, providing part of that content for us, right? So we don't have to get in there every day and, and do that much. Um, mm. We have our platform, so um, the the bite of pie, bites of pie exercises. Uh, we we uh, commit to um, 
maybe not every week because we already have 300, but definitely on a continuous basis, we are adding challenges there. So I think it's, and, and on social, of course, we post a lot on social. So I think it's uh, how you people, uh, get people engaged is to continuously provide value basically it's it's kind of a cliche but it's it's definitely what what i think what's the common thread yeah uh, and when you mentioned about the slack like like a lot of lot of learners and also the aspirants of pythonists and all of them like they take it over and they, and they help each other yeah. and they finally make the whole learning right yeah and and, and and let me back up like it's not only us pushing content that that's a great point like having other people contribute so they do guest articles they yeah uh, most of our bytes are actually now produced by by byte authors as we call them and they do a great job at it, at it so if you give people the motivation to to produce with you i think it, it's very interesting and you can get a nice dynamic yeah 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 exactly and, and when you mentioned about that thing like slack is full of wisdom like not only from pybyte stream but also with the whole entire community right they help each other and they make it forward but i want to know like slack i mean the pybyte slack is full like thousands of people learning together right yeah. but how did you made it to reach to thousands like what what sort of approaches that you uh, figured out to make it to reach the amazing learners that they can benefit of yeah you don't get there overnight right it's a, it's a slow process of of a few people getting in every day and i mean the slack channel has yeah. been around i mean i have it here on my poster um it's, i mean i guess it's somewhere in 2017 that we uh, that we started the channel um hmm. or 2018 but yeah it's a couple of years right so it's uh yeah. it's definitely a thing that's compounding and more people are, are talking about it and inviting um well i mean they, they can just join via link so obviously you put it on the blog and you talk about it and people start to talk about how amazing their time is with us there so word of mouth partially as well um mm. yeah but yeah that takes time to grow an audience <laughs> that's, that's for sure yeah <laughs> Exactly, and yeah. also when you when you make uh, this pie bait was initially an idea in your mind with with you and with Julian. It was just an idea in your brain, but later it came up into as a huge platform for learning Python and taking challenges and making ourselves better and better and further and further. Right, but the number one thing uh, that needed to be a good entrepreneur or an idea creator or someone who takes an idea to implementation and execution is someone who is willing to continuously solve problems. Right, right. And so, what are those problems? What are those problems that you have faced uh, during the process of building pie bites to the next thousands, to the next millions? Mm, I think marketing generally we were not particularly good at. <laughs> so mm. uh, we definitely had to figure it out how to to get better known and raise that awareness. But again, a lot of that also just goes to to add value. Like if you can provide value to a lot of people, then mm. uh, you don't have to really worry about that because people naturally start to talk about your brand, right? But yeah. even so, just tactically, we had a lot to learn and uh, we, we definitely paid mentors to to get better. Um, mm. We started to more engage with our list. Um, well, it's not our list, our friends list. We call it the <laughs> Pie Bites friends list. So everybody that's uh, left subscribed and left their email with us. Um, a lot more engaging this year. So asking more questions, um, more back and forth, like really wanting to meet the people and know about them. We send them personalized video messages sometimes. Like mm. we really put a lot of care in like really talking with our audience, getting to know them, um, know what their problems are and see how we can better help them. Um, I think that was a great lesson for us. And I think that's really what's what's driving the growth recently and of course the results you know if you get people results no matter then that's yeah. kind of um people just talk about that right and, and exactly yeah. so i think that's really important to get them results and um, yeah the platform is doing that in our coaching so but um that's of of course also a lot of iteration right that's not <clears throat> that's a lot of like the platform has been three years in development and it's like constantly iterating over making it better and Say with the coaching, like we we just inventing this as we go, and we we quickly iterate over, over any feedback we we get or any experience we we see in a program. So it's like this con, con this hunger to continuously improve, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but when you say that it it went over the marketing was the initial issues, but uh, it got it got figured out. It got figured out by making a good content by spreading it out with the word of mouth with the organic approach, right? Yeah. So how about uh, what are the other approaches that you used other than organic to solve it? Did have you any specific things? 
Well, this year we, we also do some paid traffic on Facebook, of course. Uh, that was just mm. the logical next step. Um, but I think like our, our friends list has been very important. Like we, we've grown that quite rapidly. And um, again, back and forth. Um, Slack has been very instrumental as well. Yeah. The, the easiness, how people just interact together and how you can just hit them up with a DM, a personal message. Um, again, Bonjoro for the video messaging has been huge for us. Um, mm. Yeah, so multiple channels, right? Um, and the platform as well. Platform, we have the whole messaging system there. We ask them questions there. People come back and we... So we, we have a lot of lot of different um, avenues to communicate with our audience, which we, we just really enjoy. And uh, we think that's important. Does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That should. And also, it, it not only answers my question, but it, it will definitely help a lot of others who really want to, you know, build a community with technology, like how uh, PyBytes is so specific with Python, right? So that's that's amazing, like the software development. And that's how people, I mean, there are a lot of, lot of people who wanted to have a community with complete technology. All of a sudden, maybe sometime else, uh, they may get failed, mm-hmm. right? So that's how, I mean, this your, your answers and your, our conversation, I hope that will definitely help them. Uh, and also looking into another perspective from learners, I mean, the community people, right? You have been understanding and helping technology aspirants to adapt new skills from years, right? So what would be your words of advice that you would give to our listeners who want to learn something new? Like how to learn anything new, like how to do exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, what, what we really found, especially with coding and Python, is that you have to fully emerge, right? And like, to, to learn how to code is, is to write code. I mean, um, mm. a common problem we see in, in our industry is tutorial paralysis or purgatory. They, they call it all kinds of things, but basically it means sticking to the books for too long and just yeah. being too, and I guess that's the same problem with some university degrees. That's just too much theory, then you go to work. Uh, it doesn't really make sense because it's it's completely different and you're, you, you have you're required to have a lot of different skills. And actually it came yeah. back, I got back to my studies when I did finance. I didn't go to the university. I went to, uh, I did some sort of MBA where, or business certificate, or how you call it? Uh, business, well, it was just business economies, but was not at a university. I was kind of studying for half year and, and working for half year. And that kind of opened my eyes like, wow. So yeah, you only take that much theory, but you mm. go to the practical side as soon as possible because everything changes. Like you have to apply your skills and, and that really is a different game. And I think that's that's what really, what we implemented in PyBytes and how we go about learning anything new. Like, yes, you have to read about it, but you have to, you have to implement. Same with the marketing, right? You can r- read 10 books about marketing, but go write your organic post, go go build up a mailing, a mailing list, go, go, learn to write by writing Mm. that's you have to become very practical um because then you also will fail pretty hard and and that's good because then you know what you have to iterate over same with people like i'm going to interview when i know xyz no go interview for a python job for example Mm. go interview today like it will be scary but you will fail and then you know what you then you know how it is right you know what to iterate over so that will be my advice in general for learning anything new is to get out there as soon as possible. To not to kind of drop perfectionism and not being afraid of making mistakes because you will. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like most of us, like generally when we try uh, taking up an initiative, it's very often that we are afraid of doing it and we are very scared about it. Right. And yeah. uh, do, you, do you have any suggestions for them to that so that they could overcome such a fear so that take it more forward um i think i mean it's, yeah it's a bit cliche saying just just go do it but sometimes it's just mm-hmm. like that right that's um when it instills a certain fear then then go push through it and maybe hold yourself accountable to it so what works really well with julie and myself is we hold each other accountable and now we can just take the action knowing that the other is going to kind of count on that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once you have that accountability uh, partnership, it, it becomes easier um, because you're just forced to do it, right? Or or set yourself yeah. a penalty or set yourself a reward, right? But have some skin in the game, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the gratification, right? You're just rewarding a few a bit and then you encourage them to make it forward. Maybe the fears, maybe down. But uh, so how do you gratify your members to keep them 
encourage and spirit up in your community keep involving so come up with new content every week which we do and yeah as i said before like have them take part of the give them ownership right give them yeah yeah you want to help on slack cool go do it right we uh <laughs> we happily invite you to do that because it's um yeah and they they might do a better job at that particular thing than we do so by all means right that's uh so if they can as part on the platform as well, if they can code there themselves, see them gamification hitting them and having them become more actively engaged, I think that's that's crucial. Uh, because if you just would just send an email every week like, well, here are the articles and not really engaging with them, yeah. I think that's pretty boring, right? So make make them really <laughs> a part of it. I think that that's important. Totally. And also when we talk about this uh, community engagement, so and also the major thing what I feel that plays a huge role is also about interaction, is also about participation. And uh, mentors plays a huge role in it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, helping the people and then taking them forward not to stuck up. Uh, you are a mentor, of course, you, you did from years. So what actually a good mentor mean to you? A good mentor really means taking somebody under your wing but not kind of just give all the solutions. Like um, you have to push somebody outside uh, his or her comfort zone uh, because that will be, yeah. that's needed for them to grow, right? So me mentoring somebody means like, you're going to do the work, I will help you, but I'm not going to give you the answers, right? I will push you, I will give you maybe hints or so, but you will have to figure it out and I will help you, right? Yeah. Sometimes, and that's not for everybody, right? That's uh, kind of take some a mindset. Um, so that that's one thing. Um, the other thing, yeah, it's it's setting an example, right? If um, if you um, ask them to code and stuff, obviously you're doing that yourself as well. So you're you're kind of leading by giving a good example. Um, mm. Means you're also always innovating and keeping up to date. Um, yeah, so I think those those two things. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, people with full of uh, such a kind of a mentors, I think it's going to be really, really amazing, like PyBets, like it's going to be amazing. So, uh, and also another bedrock foundations to the community are also are also our engagement and participation, right? But, but what I want to know is, um, what is the bedrock foundation of your community, right? That helps to grow every single day, right? But what are those core principles of PyBytes that made an impact on others? Those core principles, like... How many do you want? Um, <laughs> Two or three? It will be so great if you could give more than three or five. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, um, as I said, the learning by doing the practice is very important. Um, that that's mm. what kind of binds people together that they believe in that learning by doing um, methodology um, we have a strong mindset component so it's we say like python yes it's important but there's so much more to being a well-rounded developer right and a lot of that is mindset actually like how you show up how you your leadership skills so i think that's another principle we have um communication skills like other developer skills uh, we we are huge um investors in in those skills like again python pyvet's all, all about python but also not that much because we we look at the bigger picture right and for a software developer mm. there's a lot of other skills we want to endorse like documentation uh, communication um having a curious mindset um yeah. we talk a lot about books and 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 reading so we really think there's much more than than python to the complete picture um so we made that a principle as well and i i think also just caring about people and and their problems and again that like we said before like being super engaged and and talk with a lot of people and that that's really important and we really enjoy that part as well yeah yeah i think you just said like more than 10 <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's that's great and also when you mentioned about the books they are literally awesome. Like when I've been through searching all about you, um, I found this interesting application by your team or by you, I'm not sure, but it's by popbuilderboss.com forward slash books. It's it's a beautiful piece. Like I don't know, and also I found a beautiful quote there. A reader lives in thousand leaves before he dies, mm. right? And the man who never reads lives only for once. And that's phenomenal. And why do you think like reading books is so much important for you? Yeah, it's... It's kind of weird in the sense that we read so much and I always think I forget 99%, right? Because um, <laughs> I'm still yeah. kind of figuring out how to take proper notes and dog ear books and have my system. 
I'm getting better at that, but uh, but sometimes I'm just scared. It's a bit scary how things are just coming back, like how all of a sudden we are, we're writing a content piece or you know, having a discussion with uh, Julian or or a client, and these these things you learn from reading just coming back, and they and you start to make those connections in your brain, right? So I guess it's just an overall development thing, like. Um, you evolving as a human being right and then taking that back in in all areas of life um so how you coach how you being a parent how you run your business uh how you, just how you speak with people right um so i see it as this this overall framework or tool i can just i can just tap into right and um yeah and julian is the same he uh he's also all, and, and a lot of people in our community are always reading and self-developing and i think it's just a, a meta thing it's just beneficial on so many levels cool yeah I, i totally get that so that was so real where uh like reading the books and taking them out and you know implementing in the real time i mean it's not it's not very usual that happens uh we take the things from a book and really implement and see the results like as you said like 99 percent we forget and the only one person that we actually try to implement that right but, yeah uh what do you i mean as you said like you're you're getting better on it so <laughs> how is your process how do you make the process to make yourself better for there yeah i'm i'm still getting a bit nerdy here but i'm still <laughs> torn on uh, physical books and kindle so physical books i just dog ear the heck out of it and make sort of, sort of an index at the end so i'm just pulling down a page number and write notes mm. um but i read more on my kindle actually and then i just highlight stuff and then um on the kindle web app um they keep track of all these highlights it's all in the cloud and i can just go back and and review all my notes and i can kind of reread the book in in one or in less than an hour um so mm. but i have to go back more to kind of review my highlights and notes but that's a pretty efficient way yeah and sometimes i'm just reading on the couch and i have an idea and then i just start writing because i know it will be lost or i put it in my daily journal mm. try to materialize as soon as possible anywhere just in a film yeah. editor just write it up you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the same way like that is how you track your kind of a progress with the purpose of the book right you keep tracking about it and then you try with the real time you go back and you rephrase and you then come back with the same uh, you know knowledge or kind of a you know wisdom from it right but when we t- when we see about the tracking mm-hmm. uh tracking the performance of the community and making better and better further will create a potential impact right not only with us but also in the community tracking their performance is really important i believe right yeah. so what are the metrics that you use uh, that you actually use to perform i mean track the performance of the communities so that you could actually make it a better 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 and better further that's a good question i mean we have pretty cold numbers on number of belts and um on the platform and stuff uh, that in itself might not say that much um so again mm-hmm. it comes down to well there there's one cool thing like in slack we have a check in and wins channel and people post their wins there mm. right so we can see like how many people are posting wins uh, how how active they are implementing and and getting results right mm. now for our clients of course we have um we definitely have testimonials and we always get that feedback So it's just um <clears throat> in a weekly update conversation they also have to do their wins. So wins is kind of nice that if you document your wins you kind of build up this um you know repository of of good things you did and it's very <laughs> reinforcing as well if you're yeah. you have a little bit of self doubt or imposter syndrome to go back to your what we call success or brag wall and and read through those accomplishments. Um But it's also like if you're coaching somebody having them doing that for us it's kind of a okay you're making progress we 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 have a very close tracking in that sense through the wins documentation yeah so that that's like yeah. a clear metric i think the most important metric honestly yeah absolutely yeah I, i i can totally relate that those testimonials and also the gratitude and the wins journaling getting back to that will definitely pump you up it will motivate you to yeah. actually make it further and further and making the things unstoppable right like why we're doing this right i mean it's um uh, it's those wins and those results and those hmm. life changing things that are really like wow this is really i can do this 24 hours a day this is this is yeah, <laughs> this is super um motivating yeah 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Of course, that I mean that's how we measure, and you know, and also we take a specific, specific kind of a ways that you could actually improve the community better and better. In this case, we have Slack, right? But there will be people who will be spamming up. Mm-hmm. So how do you manage with a spamming, and you know, is that the way you directly remove them? Or what is the, what sort of approaches that you make uh, to actually make it clearer? Yeah, I have to, I have to knock on wood, but um, that that's so far not happening. Happening, uh, maybe because it's still a small number. But we do have um, a couple of moderators that are like on top of everything. And um, for example, one the issues we have, so we don't have spam, luckily. Um, and and well, if that happens, we can just uh, you know block certain people or. Uh, talk with them individually what what's why they're doing that um so an issue we have though is like uh we have those code challenges so the bytes the bytes of pi exercises and people are under fully right to ask questions on our code challenges channel in slack but they have to kind of respect uh our our rp and and other people taking that bite by not spoiling it so they mm. they can ask questions but don't put the whole solution in there that sometimes yeah. happens and moderator just kindly says that and they just delete our code and that's done but it's kind of all yeah it's it's really beautiful how that's kind of a culture and it's all automatically managed by by our community right so yeah um, yeah so again it comes back to giving people responsibility giving people i mean some just volunteered that they or they no actually it's more even more beautiful people just started doing that without us asking and then we said like oh you're doing this so actively this moderation job do you want to have admin access though that you can fully do this and like, yeah, cool. cool okay but it's not like we had to to hire people to do that they they just naturally started doing yeah. that and like, okay cool well you earned it here here you go uh, i got root permissions <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. That's that's actually the true winner of the community. Like people are engaging and they wanted to take the responsibility. Like what else yeah. we need in the community to be growing more, right? Yeah, that, so, that's our that's our biggest win actually to to exactly, have those yeah. see those things happening just naturally. Yeah, just by people being passionate about PyBytes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you don't, you don't need to work on automating the process to instruct them to remove the code anymore. <laughs> no, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So how about this? Like, um, you know, monitorizing the things is actually the way we find freedom in our work, mm. right? When we get some revenue generating in the ways so that we could try different ways. We could try, uh, you know, get uh, introducing a few other things coming up and get more engaging and get more audience and get more learnings, right? Oh. But uh, getting that revenue is such a crucial part in the initial days, yeah. right? So how was your revenue models with PyBytes or uh, or any other initiatives that you have taken, like what sort of revenue models that you try and implement and experiment you go for finalizing the things? Yeah, so we started early on, our first product was the platform subscription. Uh, then later we had the 100 days courses um, with Talk Python. Hmm. Um, then later on, we added coaching. So we're kind of building out uh, the whole, you know, portfolio, um, working on a couple of books. Um, yeah, so we are, we're growing both in content as well as services. Um, we landed our first school a couple of weeks ago. Mm. So literally high school students are now coding the bytes, which was a huge win. Cool. So yeah, the one I guess, again, one thing leads to another. So we had the platform was individual subscription tier, but then we made a team, uh, implemented teams. So enterprises can use it. Recruiters can use it. Schools can use it. So it's now this whole um, portfolio of products, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, one one interesting thing that I just got, you know, is that kids like programming for kids, specifically for schools, they learn. Yeah, we're, <laughs> it's we're passionate about that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, it's very rare that we that we see people are getting into the coding. But so I want to know, like, what sort of approaches that you use to teach them, like the kids? How do you teach them? Like, how do you teach a programming, like uh, maybe a loop or an if statements or anything, just basic things? Like, how, how do you teach them? <laughs> we we don't teach them. <laughs> we uh we allow <laughs> the teachers to do their job. So okay, um, they had a lot of success with. Uh, using our newbie bytes uh, with the mm. students, which are way more uh, hand holding. Um, but yeah, mind you, they have a large English text, and um, mm. both teachers and us were surprised how fast the students went through the newbie bytes. 
um, mm. ma- already managing that critical skill of of reading, which which sounds obvious, but you know, reading is a skill in in problem solving. And um, yeah, they could just reuse uh, a product we already had, which were the newbie bytes, and the mm. teachers just group them into their curriculum or make learning paths, so they can create their own learning paths. Um, so they can leverage, they put our materials on top of their teaching, which is pretty powerful. Hmm. Yeah, but possibly like if we wanted to expand the existing things, we need to be having a brainstorming things coming up. But this brainstorming thing comes up when we try, you know, connecting with others, maintaining relationships with the kind of a bloggers or uh, a platform developers or any others, right? Yeah. So how, how about your relationship with Python community people across the world. Yeah, this year it was a bit of a bummer. We didn't have PyCon, so there was some yeah. face-to-face <laughs> missing, which, which made it a bit more challenging. And uh, mm. But we have definitely a lot of uh, Python community people in our Slack as well um, that are yeah. also active in other communities. So, yeah, we have those contacts. Um, we, um, For example, we also did a little entrepreneurial chat on PyCon Africa, so virtual, you can still do a lot of stuff. And mm. I guess it's just reaching out and staying in touch with people. But I have to say it's a bit more challenging now with COVID to kind yeah. of really keep that up uh, through email and, and other channels. Uh, but yes, we, uh, we definitely um, do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, anything, anything interesting that's being done by PyBite side in this pandemic? In that sense, I have to highlight we have an open source org on github so um if people want to host our open source project and collaborate together via our slack then they can do that and they can host our open source project under that org and get a bit more visibility yeah so that's for example uh more of a community python ecosystem thing we i can think of right now yeah 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 and i mean any plans for pybats to move forward like now we have initially uh there's a new idea of uh, newbie bytes right and then uh moving forward fast forward yourself like 10 to 20 years further like <laughs> uh, where do you want to see pybats like wow that that's that's a a long time into the future i haven't <laughs> thought that that <laughs> <laughs> that far ahead, but um, we definitely want to grow out and have a team. Um, mm. We're really focused on the coaching. That's that's the life altering uh, part of the business. We definitely yeah. keep growing the community, the content, uh, the exercises um, because they really work. Um, so I think it's uh, expanding and getting a bigger team and uh, having mentors helping us out, having community community moderators uh helping us out just scale it up and um, Mm. i think the the principles are there we just have to to further expand probably also get into other areas like data iot and get more expertise there and leverage um you know other other people that are really good at that and and collaborate yeah yeah. Uh, and what about this? Like, uh, as, you, as you just mentioned about uh, being uh, disciplined and also, uh, you know, making ourselves uh, being so productive in these days is really challenging because we never been there. We got mm. we got such kind of uh, what we call uh, we used to complain earlier, but now we can't. Right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've seen in your bookshelf, like there are hundreds of hundreds of books, various fields like high performance, business, productivity and programming, all of that. Right. So if you were asked to recommend three books. From your back bookshelf mm-hmm. to anyone to read and build communities or they want to learn programming or they want to be highly productive. So what are those three books? Oh, that's a great question. That's very <laughs> hard. I'm now paralyzed by the paradox of choice. Um, <laughs> so let's go by discipline maybe. So for programming, uh, one book that really was insightful was Clean Code by Robert Martin, Uncle Bob. So that really taught me about how to, well, apart from, you know, you have to probably read it a couple of times as you grow as a developer and get more experience, then it starts to make more sense. But it talks a lot about just how to write clean code because Pythonic code is one thing, but there are just overall software disciplines that are language agnostic. And that, that book was great. Um, <clears throat> that's for programming. For Python, Fluent Python, that's still a very great, um, almost Bible-like. <laughs> it really, really goes deep. It's 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 a really good foundational work about Python. 
and for self-development i got two here on my desk actually which <laughs> they're always there because i have to kind of read bits of it every day just to keep in the mindset the magic of thinking big um david swartz and psycho cybernetics by maxwell maltz those are really mind-bending books i want to have nearby and and just because like it's so easy to find the trap of thinking too small undersell yourself and the magic of thinking big kind of always it, it, it's good to think big to to aim for the stars and land on the moon right yeah and psycho cybernetics is kind of related in that you can visualize and to some it might sound a bit woo woo, right? <laughs> but you can visualize uh, things in the future and kind of, it's, it's really motivating and it kind of drives you forward. So those for the self-development department, I would say those two, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in taking it away, like into the self-development, like you may, be, you may be having a few takeaways that every developer need to be in this because we have a lot of procrastination. We have a lot of, uh, l- you know, <laughs> laziness to do something work so yeah. what would be your your uh you know your takeaways for them <laughs> yeah usually that means that you lack a clear goal mm. so if you have like a clear motivating and again thinking magic of thinking big so a goal that's really outside of your league then you're going to be motivated and then you get up early and you start to get to work um so i think that's that's important and yeah usually when we see those symptoms of procrastination and and not showing up that's a missing goal or something that really drives them like for pi bytes julia and myself are really pumped and we have those clear goals and and that mm. mission so we're we're just naturally go to work at when we wake up yeah. we're on that you know so it's or whenever we dedicate the time to do it and there's like no question asked or when we were developing the platform it was so clear what we had to do we had to build this platform. Um, so Django, AWS Lambda, all that stuff. And like all of a sudden there was no social media. There was not even mm. Netflix <laughs> for, <laughs> for a little bit, although that, that got back now, you know, you have to kind of disconnect <laughs> as well. So, but it was so, such a clear mission, right? And then you just go to work and, and you're unstoppable, right? So again, I think it goes back to the goal setting. Yeah. Absolutely. Like when you mentioned about this one, uh, building up when you got the idea of PyBytes and you guys are working on it so deep, uh, what is PyBytes is built with? Like what are the tech stack behind and uh, the what we see and what we don't? Yeah. So the blog is just a Pelican uh, static site generator. Hmm. Um, and we actually have a little training on that, how to set that up. It's, uh, it's nice because it works with uh, GitHub pages. Yeah. And then you can just push your articles to GitHub and it shows up as a, a nice page <laughs> on the mm. web, you know? <laughs> um, so no CMS, no WordPress, uh, just a static site generator. For my own blog, for my own site, I use uh, Jackal, which is kind of the same yeah. thing, but in Ruby. And then for the platform, we, uh, it's uh, a Django application uh, with the code execution happens in serverless. So it's calling AWS Lambda. And it's nice because it's then... Uh, completely separated from the app. So like if people start to submit random code, that that's not going to affect our, our application. And it's using all these typical cloud tools like uh, SendGrid. Um, hmm. We have it hosted on Heroku. So we use it scheduler. It's a Postgres database. Um, we use, of course, AWS also for storage, uh, S3 buckets. So it's a nice, uh, it was a nice exercise how to get a, a fully full-fledged SaaS running in the cloud, which was a, was a great <laughs> skill to learn, you know? Yeah. Uh, and how about the uh, codingchallenge.es? How, how, how would that, that That's be? the platform, yeah. That, that's, mm. the, that's the Django thing, yeah. Cool, okay. That's great, yeah. that's great. I mean, it's, it's actually so interactive. I've been there, I, I got logged in, and uh, it, it just comes, it just takes very less time, and it, it gives a lot of results, like what you request and everything. That's cool. And also it's a very mm. good platform for learning. You have that, you know, hunger to learn something. Learning it by implementing, as you said, is so much important that can be easily done and it can be taken away from uh, codingchallenge.es. That's, that's amazing, right? Yeah. So uh, what about this? If there is something, uh, you know, someone who wanted to learn Python, what would be your advice? Like, you just want to go, go with, by doing it, like what sort of things that you could say for them? Yeah, you have to kind of have a little bit of notion before doing anything. So you can just start with a simple tutorial. I think there's a Python tutorial online just in the docs. Hmm. Go at least a little bit through that. Uh, I mean, it depends if you're coming from a programming background, because if you have 
coded in other languages, then a lot makes sense directly. If you're completely new beginner programmer, then of course it, it will take a little bit uh, more effort. But again, it goes back to go write code as soon as possible. So if you're completely new, the newbie bytes are great. They're, they're designed to get you from absolute zero to um, be starting beginner level. Uh, but even if you don't do the bytes, just open an editor or your I set up an IDE or an editor and, and start literally just typing print hello world. Uh, if blah, do this, else, blah, start to type up those conditionals to get into that mindset of, of how it is to write the code, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you have to read in parallel, but I would always do like coding and reading like in parallel, not not go read books and books and books. Some people do, right? And yeah then you're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Like that should definitely help the others. Yeah. So possibly now we are almost on the end of the conversation. We've been talking for almost like more than half an hour and it's like 50 minutes or there. So I want to know, uh, we have uh, AMA form released and you got a few crazy questions here. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, David, this was David. Hi, Bob. Huge fan of PyBytes. With Hacktober Fest coming up, I would love to be able to help PyBytes and at the same time meet some of all of the Hacktober patch pull request requirements. So any chance I'll be able to do that? Yes, if it's like previous years, then you can just um, open four pull requests and then you get your t-shirt or whatever they, they give away. <laughs> and uh, those pull requests, I think um, you can use them against any repo. So you can contribute to our open source projects. You can take our blog code challenges, which are, are linked on our blog. Um, like if you submit your code for a challenge, then uh, that should count as well. I think you have to merge it in. Hmm. I'm not sure if I have to merge it in for it to count, but we're definitely going to be mindful of that. So when October fast hits, we make it a priority to get that merged in on time so that, that it counts for you. So yeah, that's a great way to, uh, to get engaged with our stuff, to, uh, contribute to open source and, um, and get your reward, whatever it is. I think it's still a t-shirt. So, uh, definitely get four, four pull requests in and uh, again it can be you working on code challenges just for exercise purpose or go contribute to one of our repos um, we have people now contributing to our karma bot app which is the thing that gives karma in slack hmm. and they just open issues uh, with like i want to prove this and they open pull requests and they're just collectively making it better which is really cool yeah. cool i think that should that should definitely help david that's cool thanks david Shout out to David. <laughs> <laughs> what is the age speed velocity of an unladen swallow? I wow. don't know. Who, who, who's asking that? No, no name. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's not a question. I think it was from Patrick. So I'm going to answer him. Uh, what do you mean? Is it an African or an European, European uh, swallow, Patrick? I will leave it at that. It's a little inside oh, joke. Okay, for people out there just like me, what was that? We didn't get the question now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something from uh, Monty Python. Uh, and that that kind of was an inspiration uh, mm. of, for Guido to call Python the Python programming language. Um, yeah. So he, he based it on that, that series. And uh, <laughs> this is from that. <laughs> shout out to yeah. patrick <laughs> yeah patrick yeah i found that it's it's in the slack as well yeah perfect and uh, now you have another question from your from another co-founder of PyBytes, julian here <laughs> oh hit me with it so hey bob you have been you have been working from home for quite a while now you have a family that's around you almost 25 by 7 you're building a business mentoring coaching people in python and on top of all of that you're staying fit so mm. at a time where many people are finding it tough to balance just two of those things, right? Can you just share some insights as to how you manage to do everything that you do and maintain your sanity? Thanks, Julian. <laughs> awesome question, uh, Julian. So um, I think <laughs> it comes back to uh, there's a time for everything and you have to kind of see what's working best for you. Like the other day, client said like, well, I work out in the afternoon because it's um, it's improving my sleep. Like, wow, that's interesting. Like, if I do that, I might be awake till 2 a.m., right? So uh, I do my workout as soon as the gym opens. Luckily, I could go back to the gym again. Uh, so that's 8 a.m. And I just know I have to do it there. Otherwise, I will procrastinate. And then 
the workout doesn't get done and then it, it's going to affect more things so like the adm is becoming an unnegotiable same with like the morning routine um doing some steps in the morning or some journaling or reading just having that done first or, or like my affirmations and stuff has to go in the morning like that kind of go out of sequence right then deep work always best in the morning like so typically after the gym i go to produce content because the afternoon will just be crazy and interrupted yeah. and, <laughs> and slacks and whatnot you know and in the morning you have just like like just by nature you you well and again it depends a little bit of what kind of person you are but for me and i think for a lot of people willpower bucket is just stronger than in the morning and then as you go through the day or you get more uh, you hit more fatigue and then it's just harder to keep that discipline, right? So produce pro content production best in the morning. And then the afternoon, you kind of, you won the day and you can, you still have to do your meetings and all that stuff, but uh, you kind of, yeah, then then it was a good day, right? Yeah. Um, so how to balance? Yeah, and the other thing, like we, uh, Julian can resonate with that. We were not really pushing that hard during the weekends because we push very hard during the week. So the weekends kind of, we, we take off. And that's working pretty well in the sense that we're not burning ourselves out. <laughs> so yeah, balance and one word balance and kind of see what's what's working best for you in your mm. schedule. Yeah. So what's your morning routine then? So get up. Um, I it depends a little bit because I want to sleep my eight hours, kind of unnegotiable. So um, yeah. if if I go to bed late and it's close to eight, I have to do the gym first. If I can't get about seven, then it's affirmation, reading, and uh, steps, some motivation and learning. Again, going back to deep work, like that's very hard to do later in the day <laughs> because <laughs> the afternoon is a lot of meetings. And then the typical 6 p.m., 7 p.m., then the family takes over. So it's, it's hard to do anything study or deep work wise then. So I, I start with that early on. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so that's come to an end. Well, before we wind this up, what do you like to share to our listeners? So is there something that you want to share? Please feel free to. Yeah, I would I would be happy to salute you in our Slack. I mean, even if you're not a Python developer or programmer overall, I think you can still get a lot out of our Slack because we have a books channel and we have a lot of career mindset stuff going on there. So by all means, yeah. join there and uh, you can just ping Julian and myself. Whereas Hopefully uh, you got out of this conversation. We're pretty uh, social. So you can just hit <laughs> us up and uh, send us a message. Yeah. Or same on Twitter, Twitter, twitter.com uh, slash pybytes. You can just ping us there and um, yeah, reach out to us. But if you are a coder, then I challenge you to uh, to hit your yellow belt on the platform <laughs> or something. <laughs> something there. Yeah. <laughs> to go write code, basically. There's some cool badges as well. Yeah. 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 Yellow is doable. It's 50, <laughs> it's 50 points. That's about 15 exercises or so. so. 15, not 50. Yeah. Super. So once, yeah, but, but I guess once they get that yellow belt, they won't, they won't leave it there. They'll take it forward for more points, more belts. <laughs> yeah. That's a great disclaimer or warning. Yeah. That's it's pretty addictive. <laughs> addictive. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bob. It's been an amazing conversation with you. I think this conversation will definitely help for someone out there who wanted to initiate their own community in technology, maybe in Python, maybe you're in either language or maybe into uh, technologies of any of this stuff, right? So they're literally going to take a lot of things on how to build a community, how to engage that, how to grow it, how to measure it, how to use the metrics and how to improve yourself for the next month and how to have the productivity hacks in the morning routines and everything like the huge pack that you are giving from PyBytes. Thank you so much for being here, Bog. That's an amazing conversation. Thanks, Deja. Thank you so much. This was great fun. Great interview. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks.